What are you doing? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm amazing. You seem excited. <laughs> Very excited, but nervous. <laughs> okay, so for the starters, um, who do we have here? Your name? Oh, Susan Anthony Michael. Susan Anthony Michael. And one special thing, a girl from Tokori. Tokori, right? Yeah, from Tokori. What's that paper you have on your hand? A document of our background. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. T tell me, how did you guys develop it? Who are the people who are a part of the development? The elders of the Tokori. In Juba, we have some... We have a clan committee, so elders of the clan in Juba were the ones who came up with the idea of documenting our history because we had to show it to the greater Kakwa community. Since we were part of it and they had to come and visit us, that's why we came up with this paper to show them that we are part of them, we are really part of the Kakwa community. Because most of the people don't know about us, that we are part of it. Oh, really? So was, what was, like, what was the, the thing in the beginning? Was there like, there's a problem that the Tokori community don't belong to the Kakwa? Was, was there something, was there a controversy around that area or something? It's because of the five clans of the Pajilu that stay with us that came and that came with our chief that brought all these things. Okay. That's why when people knew us as Pajilu, but yet in actual sense, we are Kakwas. Okay, cool. I think that's now brings us to the part of, come on, but you look very young. <laughs> how did you, how were you part of this whole historical documentation? How did you feel? Seriously, no, I felt by the good because I grew up in Uganda. Everything that I knew, like about my, you would ask me about myself. I'll just tell you, yeah, I'm a Kakwa from where you tell me. I tell, but I didn't know the story of our people. I didn't know anything about it. So when I went to South Sudan, my father took me to the clan meetings and went to the tree. Like when we were going to have a cultural day, then they told us that they wanted an organizing committee, and that's how I was elected as a member of the organizing committee. So in the documentation, I had to be there. That's why, yeah. That's how I got to know by the, about our people, about where I come from, about how things came up, how, everything about us just... That's beautiful. I mean, a lot of people, like more especially when you talk about uh, South Sudanese way in Uganda, there's a way that kind of a distance has been able to affect the, how much you know about their people. But I think we can all give applause to your father. <laughs> For having yeah, like and to me. <laughs> and Seriously? to you too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for you, actually, for having taken like all this this into initiative, this this is beautiful. So tell us about the paper. What is really in the paper? What was the story that you documented? Like, let's begin first and foremost. Who are the Tokori people? The Tokori people are the people who are found between eleven miles up to twenty nine miles. That is the road of Meridi. Before us, there is the Minyori, then the Logo up to ten miles. Then from eleven to twenty nine, that's where you find the Tokori people. Okay, amazing. Yeah, so could you tell us a little bit about their history? The history of the Tokori people. What, what is the background of the Tokori people? Background of the Tokori people. Actually, before I go for anywhere, mm -hmm. we are the best people in Kidoro. I love that. Seriously, we are the best. Yeah. We are the Tokorians. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the Tokori is divided, actually. We are in two sub-chiefs. We have the sub-chief Lugala and the sub-chief Lukudu. I'm from Lukudu. In short, if you are to visit the narrative, the Kakwa narrative, I'm from Kona Lukudu and we have the Kona Lugala. So these two people, actually before, we were ruled by a chief called Lugala. Uh, sorry, called Lukudu. He was the Lukudu the first. Then Lukudu the first gave birth to a son who was called Lukudu the second and he passed on. So after him passing on, the brother Momo was the one who took over us and the mother of Lukudu took Lukudu back to Mokaya. So the mother was a Pajulu from Mokaya. So after some time when the guy grew up, they had to bring him back and take up his seat. So he came with his mother and some five clans from so when they came to Tokori, they had to give him his seat. He was given the seat. After him being given the seat, then he came with his uncles. And they were like, what are you going to do for the uncles? He said, these are my people. I grew up with them, so they know me. Mm. What I should, what they should be given? I just give them, like he gave them a piece of land. 
and they were he told them build yourselves that is your shelter like you build whatever that you want to do in the land that is the place that i've given you and he came from mukaya while speaking the pojulu language and for us we spoke the kakwa language so when he came some of us started like we started picking up his language since he's our chief we're like let's start speaking like what our chief is speaking so we started copying up the language from him we copied up the language so in the middle we could not even speak kakwa nor pojulu because in, like initially we used to speak the kakwa now we have again had to we had to copy up with the pojulu language it became a mess so what we would speak it is not pojulu not even kakwa mm. so we are just in the middle we speak a language if you just listen to it if you like if you're a real pojulu you'll say these people are not pojulu if you're a kakwa you'll be like these people are just mixed up they have a different language and even our culture dances the way we used to dance we used to dance like the kakwas but when the pojulu also came in with our chief we also copied what they used to dance so now our dance is a mixture of somehow pojulu somehow kakwa but we are people we are kakwa from tokori okay now this kind of history whereby there's a blend of kakwa and pojulu right now how do you look at it in the future like what do you see of right now because maybe before there was which language is taking dominance is it the pojulu culture within the tokori people or it is the kakwa people the kakwa culture within the tokori people when you look at it and you compare from like the beginning right mm -hmm. the beginning there was there was a lot of kakwa then later the pojulu actually there was a hundred percent kakwa in the yeah. beginning mm -hmm. then pojulu came in right yeah. and then took some percentage but which one do you think for now is trying to take more dominance the, the fojulu actually because mm -hmm. the elders who are there for them because since the chief knew the fojulu language now they believe that they are fojulu because those five clans that came with him from those ends of mukaya they are the ones telling people that we are what we are fojulu so even those elders some people by the the ones who grew up like in the hills of Tokori, by the Tokori, just those are hills called Tokori. Mm -hmm. so those ones who the elders the people who grew there some of them know that they are fojulu but there are some elders who came out and they were like no you people we are in the dark the fujulus were the uncles of our leader we are not fujulus we are kakwas but right now because we started it it started actually in yay then from here we went to juba the thing started coming up we are trying like we're trying to tell people that we are kakwa even those ones who didn't know because even some people who used to stay in juba they were like they are fujulus but if they ask you fujulu from where they said to come like no they are not there are no fujulus from Tokori. so we are trying to put up that that's why by the way we came up with this document for those ones who don't know like to come up you read it you know where you come from that we are kakwas so that's why when we organized the culture day for the tokori we gave this document to the greater kakwa community because for them they know that we are kakwas but they wanted us to express ourselves they wanted us to show ourselves that how are you people kakwa how are you people even related to us show us your culture does which kind of food do you people eat like how do you speak that's why we're like yes so the people now who are in juba those and who are near people know that we are kakwa now the big problem is back in the village back in the tokori people some mm. people who are still there because for them they believe they are for julu yet for us we are not for julu that's why by the way we are called tokori boma lasu bayam yay county we have never been under lanya county okay and the lanya is for Fujulu, but yes. ever been in the yay county okay now um you know culture is such a very huge huge and a very vast world okay it's sometimes not about even the language that people speak it is about let me say as you mentioned the food the dances the everything to what extent did the pojulu influence affect the tokori people did it only affect the language that people spoke or it even affected the cultures like the marriages the way you do your marriages the way you do your cultural dances the way you even do other things you know there's a lot of difference between the pojulu and the and the kakwa people so how much of that was really compromised when the Pojulu people actually, you know, the Pojulu section came in to the original um, descent of the Kakwa Tokori people? Okay. Mm. The marriages, I don't know because I have not yet, actually I have no clue about the marriages, but the food and the dances, mm. initially we used to dance like purely the Kakwa, but when they came in we started dancing like them. 
so in the middle we just mixed up like we dance somehow like them and we dance somehow like them Kakwa. so we also came up with our own thing even the language we were affected because right now some people speak for julu some people speak Kakwa, but some people just speak a language that is even unknown we don't know how to call it but it's just a language mm. we understand ourselves we speak like that the food yeah it has changed by the elders who told us that now at times if you cook like this they tell you yeah these are the foods of the fojulu but we're like mm, but we are kakwas they're like yeah because of the effect of the fojulu but seriously hmm. yeah. but and, 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 anyway now that they are new okay people are having children and probably we i don't know about you but probably there could be young girls like you who are already part of the tokori who would want us to get married right yeah. and they're going to have babies and let me say they're men too uh, what do, would you want to tell in terms of like what kind of culture do you want them to be able to teach their children looking at the future of the Tokori people do you want them to teach like which kind of what, what what's what kind of originality do you want them to push forward they should push forward the Kakwa origin because by the way mm. they should know everything that is in this paper yes that's why we're, even when we were in Juba my father used to tell people like the youths, like you people, you go for those meetings, you will know more about your culture. You will know more about, because actually our last born is called Aliki, like the lost, we don't know where we are. So you should teach your children, the youths now are there, those ones who are planning to get married, we should know the background of our people. We should know everything and we should know the true we. Who are we? We should know ourselves. So if we get to know ourselves, then we can, if we give birth to our kids, we just give, like, we pass on to them the knowledge that we had from our people. Like, we should continue with that thing. We should tell them we are Kakwa from this. We narrate to them all our history so that they know it. And even they have to pass that thing to the next generation. If we disappear, we go, so the next generation will be knowing, yeah, our ancestors were from such and such a place. So we are Kakwas. They should just continue with that thing. By the way, it's so good to attend clan meetings. To know where you come from, it feels so good if you know where you come from. But if you don't know, Jesus Christ, you better go look for where you come from. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you so much for actually being with us here. And uh, this conversation was really amazing. Um, just, uh, you've, I think you've mentioned even some kind of an advice you'd want to give it to somebody else who is out there and wondering to know more about their culture and stuff. So, um, that's probably my my last question could be around like do you really have anything else you'd love to share with us about the Tokori people that probably you have not shared and have not even asked about? There is nothing much to say about the Tokori people. Mm. But one thing I have to say to them, we are Kakwais. Seriously, we are Kakwais. It feels so good. If somebody asks me, Susan, where do you come from? I just tell you, Sitasher Miles, then it feels so good like I'm a Kakwa, I'm a Tokorian. That feels so good. We keep up the spirit of loving our culture. Thanks so much.